Hey, hope you've watched the video on understanding sets. Now, this is actually a continuation of that video. So if you haven't watched that video, I would strongly recommend that you watch it. Okay. Again, don't forget, grab a pen, get a paper or a book, and then grab your calculator. Okay. However, remember that in our GCSE exams, um, with this particular topic sets, it usually comes on a non-calculator paper. That doesn't mean that it will never come on the calculator paper because they could mix it with algebra. But of course, the chances are very, very limited. And um, importantly, though, you need to understand this. And there's a secret. Again, I would like to share with you. Remember to watch the video to the very end. I'm so passionate about this topic. One of my favorite topics is sets. My students know me for that. Okay, now let's dive in. Okay, the first thing we need to understand is simplifying sets. What do we mean by that? Now, last lesson on last video, we said that sets are the square root of numbers that we cannot work out. And they are basically irrational numbers. Number one, because they are non-recurring numbers. And number two, because they are non-terminating. We cannot express them as fractions. Okay, so it's very important. Now, however, they could ask us to simplify a set. So an example is to simplify square root of 20. Now, every set has a square number that can go into it. So that means that for us to be able to understand sets, we need to understand and know our square numbers off by heart. So our square numbers, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so I'm going to list all the square numbers and make sure you also check to follow through. So we've got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and then we've got 100. Okay, so these are up to the first 10 square numbers that we can find. Of course, there's more. There's 121, 144, 169, and so on. But just for the sake of this video, we'll limit ourselves to 100. Okay, these are square numbers. Why are they so important? Of course, we're not going to use one because one multiplied by any other number is the number itself. So we're not going to focus on the number one. And why are these important? They are so important because like I said in my first video, we know the square root of four is two. So when I see four in a square root, I immediately know that square root of four is not a set. That is very important to understand because I can work it out and I can express my answer. As a fraction square root of 4 is 2 and I know 2 is the same as 8 over 4 or I could say 10 over 5 immediately I've been able to express 2 as a fraction that makes square root of 4 a rational number it is not irrational and therefore it is not a set okay same applies to square root of 9, square root of 16, square root of 25, and so on and so forth for these square numbers. Now, for us to be able to simplify sets, the idea of simplifying simply means there is a square number that can divide into this number. We want that square number out of where it is. So that, for example, in this example, we've got the square root of 20. I know that 20, there are two numbers that can multiply to make 20. One of them is a set. Now, here is the secret. The secret is if I'm going to simplify a set, I need to work out the largest square number that can divide into it. The largest square number that can divide into it okay so if you can think of the largest square, square number that can divide into a number it's a very good step okay so what is the largest square number that can divide into 20 four yes it's four you worked it out four so i know that 20 is the same as four times by five however it's not just four times by five is the square root of four times by the square root of 5. Okay, so 4 times 5 is 20. Now, here's the thing also. You've learned a skill. We can, of course, multiply two different sets. 
So square root of 4 times square root of 5 is square root of 20. And because we know that the square root of 4 is 2, we can just say we know the square root of 4 is 2. We don't know the square root of 5. Guess what? We don't need to know it. We just have to slap it on to our square root of 5 of 2, which then gives us square root of 20 to be 2 root 5. So if you are solving a question like that, if you are asked to simplify the square root of 20, here's what you're doing. You're saying there are two numbers that could multiply to make 20. One of them is the largest square number. The other number is the other number that makes it a third and that must be left inside the square root. We can work out the square root of 4 to be 2. We don't know the square root of 5, so it slaps on there. And our answer is 2 root 5. Okay, can we try this example? If you, under if you understood it, have a go at square root of 50. How will we simplify the square root of 50? Remember, you want two numbers, two numbers that will multiply to make 50. One of them is got to be the largest square number that can divide into 50. So I think about it. And if you, if you can do it, pause the video and then have a go. All right, so I can see that two numbers can multiply to make 50. One of them is the largest square number, which in this case is 25. And I know 25 times by two is 50. I know the square root of 25 without a calculator. Square root of 25 is five. If I multiply that by my square root of two, it's just a case of slapping them together. And that's my answer. So if you check on your calculator, you can actually check it with your calculator. And if you key in square root of 50 and press the equal sign, you get 5 root 2. Okay, so we know the calculator has been programmed to understand this principle. Remember, we are looking at working out the square numbers out. And you want the largest square number that can divide into the number. Be very careful. That's why it's always important to list out your square numbers. Listing out your square numbers is a very good start to simplifying sets. No matter how big the number is, our job is to be able to work out the biggest square number. And some numbers are very, very difficult to figure out. Now, here's the secret. If you think and you get a bigger number that you cannot work out the largest square number that can divide into it, now think of the numbers which are prime numbers. It's a good start. Okay, so we look at two. Would two divide into this? No. Think of three. Would three divide into this? I check and I think, yes, three can divide into it. So what is the other number? Would that other number be a square number? It is very likely that it will be the largest square number. So when you get a question and you're not sure, think of your prime numbers that can divide into it. So I know that square root of 243 is the same as the square root of 81 times by the square root of 3. Because 81 times by 3 is 243. Immediately now I know that I can work it and I know that 81 must be the largest square number that can divide into 243. And I can work it out because square root of 81 is 9. And then I know I don't need to know the square root of 3, so I leave it. I know 9 and square root of 3 can be slapped together, and that will be 9 root 3. Again, we can check that on our calculator. The calculator is being programmed to do this for us. So we know straight away that the square root of 243 is 9 root 3. The beautiful thing about sets is we don't need to know the set as a decimal. All we need to know is the largest square number. Come on, go and smash this maths. I believe in you. Enjoy this and watch out for more videos. Thank you for watching.